Good morning, and you totally caught me talking about rocks. Today, I am talking about a sodic boron aluminum silicate with either manganese or iron in the system. Bonus points if you know what it is, and it's totally fine if you don't, because I wouldn't have known. I mean, but this is what I do. I'm talking about tourmaline, although otherwise known as shoral, because this is the black tourmaline. This is the most common tourmaline that there is. Cool things about tourmaline. It forms primarily in pegmatites. Ta-da! <laughs> Actually, so, uh, they, it, the tourmaline gets its black color uh, because of magne manganese and iron within its system. Another cool thing, it has two different planes of hardness. It's a seven in one direction and a seven and a half in the other direction. There are very few minerals that have dual hardnesses. Usually it's between a level, but this one is specific about its directional hardness on most hardness scale. <clears throat> now, tourmaline, mainly associated with pegmatite. So what's a pegmatite? A pegmatite is the last batch of magma, the very bottom part before after all of the other magma has been, you know, pushed to the top and becomes lava. The last batch of lava, thick in mineral-rich water, uh, lots of different minerals swirling around in there. Anyways, that stays underground and it cools over a long, 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 long period of time, usually millions of years. And the bigger the crystals, the more defined the crystals, the more solution there was, the more space it had, so it had a lot of water, a lot of very, very saturated fluid underground. And then it had enough space for these to form. So that is, uh, you know, big crystal formation, lots of space, lots of voids, lots of saturation, and plenty of minerals in the fluid to draw from. Now it's associated with quartz, biotite, tourmaline, fluorite, muscovite, topaz even and it, just because of the the pegmatic association or properties that are involved with this um i guess other interesting things about it it was thought to be just a junk mineral at first when anybody was mining for actual tourmaline they saw this black funky stuff and they're like ew we don't want that we're just going to throw it away now it's considered a gemstone. People really, really love to actually go mine it uh, just, just for its properties of being cool. A lot of people use it for a metaphysical stone. That's up to you if you want it for whatever it's used for. I think it's cool. The thing that drew me to this first when, like first hearing about it is because when I went to go look for the rose quartz pod, in my three or four failed attempts before actually finding it, I found black tourmaline on the ground. Not so cool like this big one, but, uh, and you know, not even as great as these. These, I, I think I found these out in Baghdad. But this over here, these little tiny ones, I could see like little teeny tiny crystals popping up through a giant piece of quartz. And it, there was a piece of it on the road. So I thought to myself, being my very, very, very brand new geologic brain, that this mineral is associated with a pegmatite. A pegmatite usually has quartz. I'm looking for a quartz pod. So a quartz pod can actually be right in the center of the pegmatite. And then there are other, be other pegmatic minerals around that pod. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no other minerals in, surrounding in the area. Just it, it varies greatly, varies by location. Uh, specifically, when I found that, that quartz pod in my very first piece of black tourmaline was in California, out on BLM. This was way, way, way northern California. Um, what else can I say about this? I love when I'm talking about these sometimes my brain's like, dee, 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 and I feel like, you know, that the Jeopardy countdown of, what can you say? But that's it. I mean, short and sweet, it is an awesome mineral. Uh, like I've said before, 
This is a short series that I'm doing where I don't cut. This is one take, so what you see is what you get. And I use a lot of different books. They all pretty much tell you something a little bit different. I'm trying to collect them here on the ground because I bring them outside just in case I want a reference or to look something up. And yeah, I started out using the Autobahn Society book. That was the very first book I got. I have had it for ever. I had it way, way before I was a gel just because I was so interested in minerals. But these books really help you if you're trying to like figure out some facts. Let's say you know your mineral, you know where you got it, what it is, you're, you're pretty sure. And you just want some extra fun facts about your mineral. Um, these books will give you a wealth of information and um, some of it is a pain. It has words in there you might not understand at first, but it can really help you out. So I do recommend them if you're, I guess, a budding geologist or you're just a rock hound that really wants to be more involved to learn a few more facts about your rocks. Um, oh, one other thing that I can say about this, I forgot, it just kind of like sparked. Um, it can form in metamorphic rock as well. Um, the minerals get altered and can, you know, turn into tourmaline, but it can also be vein deposited as well. Just meaning that the hydrothermal fluid that was also down in that magma chamber can split rock or an earthquake or something. And so the magma fluid, that, that hot bottom portion of the magma chamber can have enough pressure to shoot through a rock, maybe it's pre-existing, maybe it was part of the volcanic eruption, and can deposit the fluid within that, that vein structure. Now, this is probably going to still be underground while this is going on. Again, because it needs a lot of time. And with that time, it doesn't just mean that, oh, the mineral's there, it, that's it. If water evaporates off too quickly out of the system, you're not gonna have enough time for the solution to be extracted to form the mineral. And then if it cools too quickly, if that heat source goes away, again, you're not going to have enough time for it to stay heated at the proper temperature for long enough before it starts to crystallize into its form by pulling all of that other uh, minerals out of solution to create the tourmaline. So I just wanted to say that because I love that, that portion. I love like realteration. I love post mineralization and hydrothermal activity because most rocks that are post mineralized are due to hydrothermal activities. So anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You totally caught me talking about rocks and I'll see you later.